Well, hey, man. Well, hey, man. <laughs> <laughs> Finally got together. <laughs> yeah. You'd think uh, living with each other, we'd find more time to make videos. Yeah. Yeah, that's a... Uh... What the hell? <laughs> <laughs> it's a time thing, man. We're, we're uh, short on time. <laughs> That and we've been really tired lately. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, our primary shooting time is usually between the hours <laughs> of 2 and 5 in the morning. Yeah. So, uh, True. yeah, kind of makes it difficult. <laughs> uh, but, hey, did you, did you watch that season finale episode of Loki? Yeah. Three weeks ago? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So it wasn't good. that long ago, but it was it was two weeks ago. It, it, almost. Yeah, it, it was almost two. It was two weeks ago. Yeah, uh, that's how long it's taking us to get to this video. Oddly enough, um, <laughs> normally we would have shot it the very next day after it aired. Mm -hmm. We would have shot it Thursday night, and yeah, stuff happens. Life gets Life. in the way. Yeah, and you know, can't really shoot a video if you're sleeping, which I kept falling asleep. As did I. Yeah. But so, anyways, uh, got two things to talk about. Like this beer, and like Loki season finale. Mm -hmm. I uh, want to just kind of get through talking about the beer so that we can talk about this season finale because yeah. there's a lot to talk about. Mm -hmm. And even though it's been almost two weeks so, <laughs> since we watched this, we haven't really talked about it between each other. True. Yeah, all that much. Uh, so, yeah. Lots of speculation abound. Mm -hmm. I mean, we got speculation for season two of Loki. We got speculation for Spider Man, Doctor Strange, Ant Man and the Wasp. Just so much. And like for basically the entirety of the next decade of Marvel Cinematic Universe. And this is a lot. Crazy. A lot just happened. <laughs> uh, but, anyways, beer. Bonnet Distortion by Firestone. This is the, uh, you know, not the last Firestone that we're probably going to do. But, uh, is, you know, they're going to come out with something else new. And we're going to drink it. Need another beer to drink. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, like you said, 5.9%. Um, it's really light. Yeah, it's definitely on the lighter end. It's nice, though. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's very kind of bright, citrusy. Crisp. Crisp. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is definitely a good summer beer. Oh, yeah. Nice enjoy by the pool. Mm hmm Enjoy with the sprinkler on or the mister. Or... Yeah. But it's still got some hoppiness to it, mm -hmm. which I like. It's kind of like the uh, the Pivo pills that we did mm -hmm. before where it's got some hoppiness to it, but it's not, like, overpowering. Mm -hmm. It's actually way more on the citrusy side. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Quite nice. Mm -hmm. I, I'd recommend this beer. Oh, yeah. Um, what do you rate especially it? Especially, uh, do you know? I'd lean towards that solid three point five to four. So yeah, it's a pretty solid beer. Be right uh, yeah, as far as like a day drinking beer during the summer, five point nine is kind of like where you want to be. True. Um, so I don't have any guff about the alcohol content. No. And it's crisp. It's refreshing. It's got a little hoppiness, so that it kind of plays into our palates a little bit more. Quite enjoyable. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, I, I, I'll lean towards the four. Yeah, as, as a great summer day drinker. I'll I'll, I'll stick with the three point five. I uh, I do like it. Very crisp. Very nice. Got nice that nice hoppiness to it. But uh, yeah, three point five for me. Three point five. Yeah. Uh, what, what, what would you say is that docking point? And uh. uh well, I just like stronger beers, so... Fair enough. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, 5.9 is not nothing to laugh at. It's just, I like I like stronger beers. Well, yeah. yeah. I mean, you and I, I like, like to be in like the 7 to 12 percent <laughs> yeah. you know, range. Mm -hmm. But, uh, yeah. If I'm barbecuing, I still got crap to do later in the day. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I could drink a few of these. Be totally fine later on. Still enjoy my beer, have a good time. I don't think I've heard of the this hop right here. Have you heard of this one, Nectaron? 
No, actually, I haven't heard of... Oh, it's Nectaron Wirwaka. Yeah. Um, yeah, Nectaron Wirwaka. There's no common between those two. Yeah, so it'd be, uh, well, it'd be that. And Motueka? I haven't I've heard, heard of... I've heard of the Motueka. I don't remember where, but I have heard of that one before. Yeah, I, I think it was in one of the uh, <coughs> institution beers. Yeah. I don't know, I wouldn't be surprised. And then Nelson. Nelson's and Nelson's in like everything. Nelson's in a lot of things. <laughs> um, <laughs> anyways. Uh, <laughs> enough about the beer. We are done with the beer. We are talking about Loki now. Yes, we talk about Loki now. I don't know why we're doing horrible German accents, but that doesn't matter. <laughs> uh, spoiler alert for if you haven't few seen people that haven't this seen it. episode. I mean, you know what we're about. <laughs> Come on. Um, talk about what happens in the episode and then we'll talk about the implications and then we'll talk about theories Mm -hmm. and what what we think might happen in the future of the MCU even though Disney has proven to uh, subvert expectations in the most obvious ways Mm -hmm. that it actually subverts subverting expectations at least for me Mm-hmm. It's like, so far in all of the shows, like in the previous two shows, it's like, what they set up is the obvious, you know... As the obvious answer is answer the obvious answer. Is actually the, the obvious answer. <laughs> and you're looking at it like, oh, it's probably not... I mean, uh... It's not Agent 13. <laughs> yeah. Like, it's, it's, you know, Sharon Carter was the power broker. Mm-hmm. Just... They, 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 they put it right in front of us, still, making it seem like a red herring, and they're just like, nah, it's, it's, it's actually that. It still irritates me. I, I know. <laughs> I still maintain the fact that she's a scroll. <laughs> it's very possible. I, I well, well, we'll get into that <laughs> later, because there are some heavy Secret Wars implications <laughs> at the end of this episode. But mm-hmm. we finally see Loki and Sylvie go to uh, the castle at the end of time. Where he who remains yep. resides. Um, I like the architecture of the castle, where it's like got all the the gold. It's all yeah, it's all dark, but with like the gold like veins and it. yeah, it's very it's like cool. The, the uh, kitsugiri. Yeah. Um, and the Japanese like the art of actually like taking something broken and then filling in the broken, filling in and the putting it back pieces. together with gold. Yeah. To make it more of like. A, you know, work of art mm-hmm. rather than something broken. Uh, so that obviously plays into the whole uh, thing of the, like the timeline was this big old fractured thing, and that he who remains put it all back together. That and like the the broken statue kind of hints at the fact that like this has happened before. Yeah. <laughs> so. Well, first, we gotta we gotta do the the Miss Minutes jump scare. <laughs> oh yeah, the which Miss is Minutes, great. Which was wonderful. Yeah, she had like such a menacing face on too. Oh, totally, like <laughs> big old wide eyes. Like hey, hey, <laughs> so good. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> pretty creepy, but uh, very effective. And like, I I still have no idea what to make of Miss Minutes. <laughs> um, like where she came from, like. Obviously, she's working for He Who Remains, and <laughs> so whatnot. She's calling me still. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but we don't really know, like, who created her and like what her actual purpose is and what what she's going to do yeah. further on down the line. I mean, she's probably gonna be primarily just Loki seasons in in those. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, like very ominous character. Uh, I've, yeah. I've had so many questions ever since she was introduced, and I, I still have no answers to yeah. any of them. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, but yeah, offering Loki and Sylvie deals on you know returning into the timeline, um, getting everything they wished, mm-hmm. being able to be together, like all that 
crazy stuff. Mm -hmm. And you can see that Loki kind of gives pause. Like he it, thought about it for a he second. He thought about it. Because um, ultimately, at this point, you know, he's he's actually shifting towards being more of a hero. Mm -hmm. He like yeah. where he was at the end of like Thor the Ragnarok and like Thor Infinity Ragnarok War. And the beginning of Infinity War. Mm -hmm. Um so we could see uh we could see more more well we're gonna see more of him, you know, developing into more of a heroic anti hero hero kinda character. Yeah. Uh Sylvie's just straight up like, nah. <laughs> I wanna go kill this guy. <laughs> yeah. This guy messed up my life. He's dead. Uh, which really kind of shows the growth of Loki as a character throughout the season. Um, that, you know, he's no longer driven by revenge mm -hmm. or, you know, t you know like ruling, but actually finding a way for him to break the cycle of, you know, what his purpose is, you know, just always losing mm -hmm. and always being just up here, Agent of Chaos. <laughs> uh, and then we get to meet He Who Remains. Yes. Um, Nathan Richards. Nathan Richards. Nathaniel Richards. Nathaniel Richards. Nathan, Nathan Richards. Nathan Richard. Richard. I, I don't know. Exactly. I'm pretty sure it's either one. Uh, <laughs> but he's referred to Reed Richards. Yeah. <laughs> and possibly Victor Von Doom. There is that whole thing in the comics where they're unsure, but yes. Mm, yeah. <laughs> could play out anyway now. Comics are weird, so. Comics yes. are very weird. And we'll probably get a more uh, concrete answer as to where he came from, possibly. Pro probably during um, Ant Man and the Wasp. Yes. So, he remains. Mm -hmm. uh, also offering Loki and Sylvie the deal, like. You know, maybe you can take over here. Like, oh, I'll be gone, and you guys run things. You guys make things how you want. Like, maintain the timeline. And, you know, Loki, again, pauses. He's like, well, we should actually think about this. Like, what happens if we get rid of this guy? Like, we really don't have any answers right mm -hmm. now. Which, same as us. <laughs> Loki's basically in our position. Yeah, here. exactly. It's like, it's like, we have no idea what's going to happen. Is he telling, like, the whole time you're like, thinking, like, is he actually telling the truth? Yeah. Like, you're questioning everything this guy says. Mm-hmm. And it's still unsure whether or not he, you know, m maintains that timeline mm -hmm. it, for him to end up being where he is, or if he maintains the timeline for the reasons that he says he was maintaining the timeline to actually prevent the multiversal war. Yeah. And so that's good. That has implications just, just so, so much. <laughs> yeah. There's really so much. Um, then we get the obligatory action scene with Loki and Sylvie fighting. Mm hmm. And. I felt like that was actually probably one of the better action scenes in the series. Yeah, it was. Just because every time she's going to kill He Who Remains, um, Loki's, right, Loki's there. right there, and she always stops. Mm -hmm. Like, she very much does not want to kill him <laughs> <laughs> um, or hurt him in any way, which, you know, nice and touchy. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we get the. Uh, moment that most people either were dreading or like really not sure how to feel about when they kissed. <laughs> <laughs> I liked it. I was hoping for that for a while. Although it was still a little weird. It's still a little weird, but yeah, I kinda agree with you. I, I, I thought it was I thought it was nice. I was rooting for them. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted them to have a nice right. place at the end of the galaxy and they, not do anything. They just both play those characters so well. And their characters obviously have such great chemistry mm -hmm. that even if it is kind of weird, it's still like uh, you still kind of feel like they need to end up together. Yeah, for the weirdest reasons possible. <laughs> They're just the same person on different timelines. Uh, that being said, uh, we did kind of like look into like going into the timeline. 
so to speak, and following it through. And uh, like a lot of people have been asking or you know speculating on you know how can there be different variants mm -hmm. if it's all one timeline. Mm -hmm. But you kind of look through the timeline and see that there's like different uh, like strings mm -hmm. going through it. So in reality, what what I'm thinking and what I think the majority of people are thinking uh, for that is that there's multiple timelines within the sacred timeline and those are just the ones that he who remains keeps so that like, those are the timelines that don't result in the other variants of him of him being becoming evil what, yeah, and king the trying to, and trying to yeah. conquer the multiverse yeah um, which I'm sorry like the stakes have been so massively jumped up between like Thanos you know wiping out half of the universe mm -hmm. to King Kang conquering all of the all universes. Of the universes, yeah. Or destroying all of the universes where his variants that are fighting him are from. Mm hmm I uh, wonder if we'll get a like a like a little tidbit of like the the Council of Kang. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like that that could come in much later on down the road. Or maybe they'll like they'll hint at it of like uh Ant Man and the Wasp in like a mid credits or after credits scene. Yeah. <laughs> well it's crazy just how many different places where he's gonna show up mm -hmm. um, because I mean he discovers the multiverse and learns how to travel in between them mm -hmm. um, so we could literally see him in any movie <laughs> or TV show going forward yeah. if they really want to have uh, what's his name Jonathan Majors yes uh, be in literally every Marvel something for the rest of, you know, his time yeah. in the MCU. True. He did, he's a great, great actor. Phenomenal actor. Did that whole scene. Stupendous in this entire yeah. episode. Like, this, this episode had, have, obviously has the most implications for the rest of the future of the MCU. Oh yeah, easily. And it was, hands down, the slowest paced episode. So yeah, it was, but it you was didn't, literally just exposition dump after exposition dump. But you didn't really it didn't really seem like a like all that slow. You were enthralled the entire mm -hmm. time. Like Well that just goes to show the strength of those characters. And I think it was Loki, I, I don't Sylvie, know if Miss Minutes. And, I think it was one of the shorter episodes too. I honestly don't know. I, I think it was it like I just I think it was like forty five minutes. <laughs> like 'cause like 'cause the first one was fifty five. And then it was 51, and then it was like... And it just kept going down the farther into the season you went. But you mm -hmm. didn't really notice how short the episodes were until it was over. And you're like, what the hell just happened? <laughs> <laughs> Where, I, I can't wait another week for this. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, like... And... Uh, yeah, like the whole... Everything until like... And then when he he drops the pen on his desk, and he's like... Because he doesn't know what's going to happen now. Yeah. He has no... He, he has, has that memories. moment of, of uh, you know, he's like crossing the threshold. Yep. You know? Like, he no longer has seen what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah. And funny enough, uh, like, multiple videos on the internet have pointed this out, but if you line up episode six, or not episode six, but episode nine of... WandaVision and episode 6 of Loki around the same time that Wanda uh, first taps into the chaos magic and becomes the Scarlet Witch it lines up time-wise <laughs> with he who remains like dropping the pen and like he's crossing the threshold <laughs> making people believe that those two events have uh, are connected they're like Wanda becoming the Scarlet Witch Ooh. is what causes uh, the that the would be the the be nexus crossed. event that like being a nexus being she like causes she's caused the threshold to ch of like to divert slightly 
Mm -hmm. Interesting. I like that idea. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. Which also, you know, might explain why she heard the voices of Billy and Tommy mm -hmm. when she's reading The Dark Hold. Mm -hmm. uh, it's because now the universes are branching and she can she can travel between, she can travel between the multiverse. Multiverse, yeah. Because um, yeah, there is a Scarlet could, Witch in every, in every universe, yeah. Yeah. She could conceivably hear them in a different universe where they actually exist. Interesting. I like that. Yeah. Yes. I thought that was one of the, the more interesting theories that came out mm -hmm. um, that I really liked. Uh, that also would give them an excuse to like to age the kids up a little bit. Mm -hmm. So we're a little closer all in age. So yeah, they can with like, be, uh, like to start the Young Avengers. Mm -hmm. That would also be cool. Yeah. That also needs to be a show. So that they oh, can totally. expand on the characters themselves before they go into a movie. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> but um, we're already jumping into theories here. Well, um, oh, yeah. So, yeah, and then she sends Loki to back, back to the TVA. Mm -hmm. uh, but was he sent to an alternate timeline? Or was well, he, thing, or now. did the timeline branch while he was sitting there? So, what I, it's hard to say because it was very, it was very like quick moments, and then, um, you know, we get the reveal that Mobius and the other agent don't remember him; mm -hmm. like they have no recollection of ever meeting Loki. Yeah. Um, and then we see the statue of Kang. Yeah. Um, so, what it seems like is that since the TVA is outside of time, mm -hmm. technically, and we see, like, they're they're looking at the timeline and mm -hmm. seeing all the branching off and just, like, you know, questioning, like, oh, what are we supposed to do? Like, are we, do we wait for him to tell us what to do or, like, what's happening? <laughs> um I don't know. I don't know because the TVA exists outside of time. Mm -hmm. So how can the TVA have a different, you know, like area, like a different location, a different universe? Yeah. So okay. So like you. So that's yeah. That brings up an interesting point. Like, is it is the TVA still like? Do they have since they have no memory of Loki? Is that means that his variants are still out there. So we might get to see classic Loki again. It's possible. I, I'm not sure. Because I mean, there's just so many branching, yeah, like branches out there, and they didn't. It didn't seem like they could or had enough people to go get rid of all those events. Oh, yeah. No, it's impossible. So, <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know. There's so many unanswered questions and. Thank goodness, like, instead of, like, having an after credit scene or anything, they're just all, like, Loki season Loki two. Loki season two. Um, which I, I heard that it was supposed to be, like, one long season, but because of COVID and all the it makes sense. craziness, um, it just kind of got broken down. It's better that it's in two seasons, because that way they can, like, they can go back and touch on, like, things that happen in uh, Doctor Strange, Spider-Man... Hey, Man of the Wasp, yeah. and like touch on those things, and build more on Kang uh, in season two, which would lead to like the next Avengers movie or the one where Kang is the big bad in it. Yeah, well, Kang's supposed to he, allegedly Kang's next appearance was supposed to be Hey, Man of the, Man of the Wasp, Wasp Quantum Mania, Quantum Mania, yeah. uh, where he's going to be the main antagonist. Yes. Um, but that's not to say we won't see other variants mm -hmm. of him in movies like Doctor Strange, Spider-Man, uh, and the Hawkeye series. It, pst, there's so many things that happened before yeah. uh, Ant-Man and the Wasp comes out. <laughs> yeah, there's yeah, there's a lot. Yeah. And now, like, everything has the potential to branch into multiversal shenanigans. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> I'm like... 
I'm just thinking of it in a way of like we got uh, we got Doctor Strange coming up, which is entirely based on multiverse, mm -hmm. um, and then like Spider Man, which we've already heard is gonna have some like you know universe jumping mm -hmm. craziness going on there. Yeah, uh, and then. Uh, but then we got movies like Black Panther coming out. And it's like, how does that tie into the multiverse? Are they even going to touch it in that? What are they, what's going to happen? Well, there's, a, there's a big theory right now with Black Panther that uh, the lady that they just cast is going to be an aged up version of Shuri. Mm. And then like she's going to take the mantle of Black Panther... But then they're going to bring back Michael B. Jordan from a different timeline who was still Killmonger, but not necessarily evil. <laughs> and they're going to bring not him from his timeline. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Him from his timeline. He basically is he basically is T'Challa in that timeline. And mm. they just bring him from that timeline into this one. <laughs> and he becomes Black Panther and he takes the mantle of Black Panther like forward. Yeah. So that way, I mean, that I would, way, Chad Mc, I Chad McBoseman's character can still live on and be live on like as T'Challa. Yeah, and honestly, like Michael B. Jordan did a terrific job as Killmonger. Oh so yeah, I would love to see him come back. Well, we're already confirmed to see Killmonger, uh, Michael B. Jordan, the character Killmonger in the What If series. Yes. Um, and that is also Chadwick Boseman's last time appearing in anything Marvel. Yeah, because he already recorded his lines. Mm -hmm. He did yeah, everything uh, for what uh, the What If series before he passed. I might, I might, I might tear up a bit. Uh, yeah, when we get to that episode, I might cry. <laughs> um, um, it's like watching. So any I other think old Marvel movie every time Stanley <sighs> pops up and you're just like, <sighs> "Not crying, you're crying." <laughs> <laughs> Um, but so okay, so I think that what the What If series is going to attack a lot, also a lot of the multiverse parts mm -hmm. to try and close off those universes, uh, because that's already what the premise is for the series. So, um, like the Watcher is putting a team together to close off these multiverses, essentially. Mm -hmm. So, um, so yeah, we get a bunch of different people from different timelines, and yeah, it'd be really cool. I think that's how they're going to partially get rid of some of them, and then Doctor Strange helps as well, and then Ant-Man and the Wasp maybe touch on the multiverse theory a little yeah. bit. Um, but it, it's a theory. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so, going into, I mean, the immediate follow-up, I think, mean, season two. Mm -hmm. Like, what's going to happen in season two? Yeah. Uh, obviously, uh, we're going to have some, well, not obviously, but uh, most likely, I feel like, the, the first episode's going to be a lot of, of uh, Loki- convincing Mobius that he's a, uh, a variant mm -hmm. and re-freeing the TVA <laughs> again. Uh, and then basically just him finding a way to get back to the castle and get back to Sylvie. Ooh, maybe we'll get Tempest in this season. And that's how they distract Elioth. Yeah, that's that's possible. And then I, could, I, I feel like that could be like Later on, towards the end of the season, yeah, and then yeah. we'll get, uh, and then we'll get like Renslayer also being at like at the castle, yeah, protecting. Because yeah, that also happened at the end of the episode. Uh, during the episode, was Renslayer's like, oh, I got to do this, and just takes off somewhere. Mm -hmm. um, we have no idea where. Do you? Yeah, uh, the implication is that Miss Minutes gave her instructions from uh, He Who Remains mm -hmm. to possibly make sure that he becomes who he was at the end of the season. Yeah. Um, but it could have also possibly been, because as we saw, that the TVA had a statue of 
King and Conqueror. Yeah. Um, it could have also been a variant of Kang that gave those instructions and is leading Renslayer to ensure that he becomes he who remains. Yeah. Uh, Because, you know, obviously they're two different variants considering the fact that one, uh, the one that we saw, dies. Two, um, instead of using the timekeepers as, you know, the figureheads for the TVA, Mm -hmm. he just steps in directly. Yeah. So, I think that could be a thing where, you know, a variant of Kang, Mm -hmm. more so than, like, because people are saying that the He Who Remains was uh, Immortus. Yeah. You know, the older version of Kang that, like, gave up doing the whole conquering thing. He just wanted to maintain, um, like, a semblance of peace between the multiverses Mm -hmm. and, like, you know, live out the rest of his days just kind of keeping things in check. Yep. Uh, But Kang the Conqueror wants to rule over all of the multiverse. Yeah. And so, I don't know. Man. What do you uh, think? There's, what I mean, there's, there's so many things gonna, that can happen in season two. Yeah, because also Renslayer is a love interest for Kang the Conqueror Yeah, in the comics. But he doesn't find that out until she dies. Yeah. No. She keeps rejecting him until that last part where she's dying. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, yeah, the second season should... should I'm thinking it's going to expand more on, like, who Kang the Conqueror is... Um, and, like, expand more on, uh, his character, like, who he was before he became King the Conqueror, how it happened, um, as long as they show that he's obsessed with, like, the past, and the whole reason why he keeps going back to the past, (laughs) um, I'd be okay with it, I'd be happy with it, plus, Jonathan Majors is... Just a wonderful actor, so I'm I, I'm I very excited to see him. He gets to play this character too, <laughs> because you know we're likely gonna see him doing like a uh, orphan black thing where he's gonna be seven different characters in one scene. <laughs> you yeah, know? like it, it can it can get totally crazy, and he's gonna have free reign to flex oh, his acting gonna, ability. He's gonna have so much fun with this character. Yeah. <laughs> It's going to be wonderful, uh, and I, I am very excited to see where this goes. Yeah. Um, I hope... There's just so many fun possibilities that are, I know, are going to happen. I mean, like, dealing with time, there always, there's infinite amount of possibilities, so... Yeah. I, I'm like hoping... We were okay. saying, like we were saying at the beginning of the season, like, it, who's behind the TVA? Well, it could have literally been anybody. Obviously, they were hinting at Kang or, you know, a variant of him uh, pretty heavily throughout the season. Mm-hmm. Especially episode five, we literally see Kang Tower. <laughs> um, and we see his the, the Sphinx spaceship. Yeah. Uh, ooh, maybe in the Eternals, we'll see, we'll see them encounter the Pharaoh Kang. Ooh, that'd be interesting. And that would be Egypt a good. That would be a good callback. I we like that. And just like ruled over Egypt, because we do see the Eternals uh, in Egypt. I think mm-hmm. in one of the one of the trailers. In parts in the, part of it, yeah. So that's definitely a possibility. That's a t- that's it looks like it was you know back back in the day before. <gasps> they lost if they throw in like a random like random mutant call in. With the with the with the ancient Egypt, I think that'd be really cool. Like, throw in a random apocalypse hint, like he's there, but he's like still a kid. Ooh, <laughs> that could be cool. That would be really cool. That would be so cool. Like that way, they could like hint at the fact that mutants are there, but they're not really there yet. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh. Oh yeah. Ooh. Yeah, so much fun with this, <laughs> with this, like, with with this the whole future thing. of the MCU. With this whole thing, it's just so cool. Yeah. yeah. Um, I hope that I hope that we do get to see Doctor Strange going through a bunch of different timelines and seeing a bunch of different aspects of what could have happened. Um, 
Like, it would be really cool to see different Peter Parkers in that one, too. <laughs> like, he goes through it a is, universe and I see... Mean, it is it. possible that uh, Peter Parker ends up in Doctor Strange. Mm -hmm. like, it's... There's so much potential set up for that. Oh, totally. Um, and this also does set up Tom Holland mm -hmm. uh, being in the Venom u universe. Mm -hmm. And the... The Morbius. I always, I, I, I keep like keep in my head mixing up Mobius and Morbius. Yes. I'm so glad they're not technically in the same universe right now, because that's <laughs> just we, that's just way too much. Because then you have to poster. differentiate it before between Morbius <laughs> yeah. and Morbius. Like, if they ever other. interact with each other, I'm gonna be so irritated. <laughs> it's a good thing that they don't. <laughs> yeah. Um. <laughs> How hilarious would that be at the same time? Like, uh, no, that, would, that would be irritating. That would be that would have been oh, it would have been a good Tony Stark moment though. It would have been like Morbius, 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 Morbius. Because <laughs> <laughs> that's a total Tony Stark move. Yeah. yeah. <sighs> it would have been nice. There's, there's so many different theories, oh, so yeah. many different possibilities. Yep. I mean. If we had written everything down and like bullet pointed everything, we could possibly have gotten through everything that that we know of. There's nothing. Or there's think of. There's no amount of paper <laughs> that can contain the amount of possibilities that there could have yeah. been. But like based on what's based on what's actually happened. feasible, yes, um, possibly maybe like ten pages. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to at least? I'm lowballing too. Do you want to at least uh, talk about why this might lead into Secret Wars? Uh, yes, definitely. He, he's going to have the more detailed description of what, what might actually what happen. What am I saying? Like how, how it's actually going to. Okay. Like, this might be the, the end game level, uh, you know, occurrence. Occurrence? Uh, okay, so I don't think it's going to be like quite to that extent, but I definitely see that the. Well, because it's all about, like, you don't trust, like, the whole thing was about misguided trust in the whole comic book series. And, um, and that's why I think that Sharon Carter is a scroll because, that like, she's the scroll queen. She still wants power, but she wants to, like, like to slowly gain trust between, like superheroes and now she has like she's a higher like high ranking in the government mm -hmm. she has government access she has more access to like shield stuff again like that's why i'm thinking more and more like she's planning on like slowly infiltrating like superheroes and stuff because shield already had access to like all the aspects and all the possibilities for superheroes down the line so that way Spider Woman, if she ever makes an appearance, could possibly be a scroll when we first meet her. Um, we can get um, like it, there's just there's just so many possibilities with it, cause like I'm really hoping that it's not a six episode one, maybe like seven eight, like not too long, but at the same time well, not too like short. Said, or mean, if you're go or if you're gonna have a short season, make them all fifty minutes. Because it's got to encompass a lot. You have a, there's a lot of explaining to do, and I mean, to be fair, to be fair, to be fair, <laughs> um, to be fair, the way the shows have been going is not exactly the blueprint for how they were supposed to go. True. So we we're supposed to get Falcon and Warner Soldier first six episodes, then we we're supposed to get One Division second. Which was nine episodes, mm -hmm. and then Loki was supposed to come after that, which was supposed to originally be twelve episodes. Yeah, and now we're getting that split up into two separate seasons. Mm -hmm. So we could see a Secret Wars kind of series being a full being a full season. twelve to even twenty four episodes. Twenty four episodes. Series. Um. If they I don't do, think it's gonna. Be I don't think it'll much. be. I don't think it'll be a twenty-four episode series. I think it'll be if they're 
if they do it right, which is the hard part. <laughs> 10 to 12 would be great. Yes, per it'd be perfect at 10 to 12. It would be absolutely perfect because you'd have everything explained. You can, like, you can character dive. You can develop characters. You can develop, like, background. You build, like, more into the lore. Yeah. And you can also introduce thousands of more characters oh. into the series. Absolutely. And, like, um, introducing which, Super Scrolls and, I, I like, do, the I Fantastic do, Four. I do want to kind of just... Real briefly, talk about how important these shows have been for character development. Mm -hmm. Is I mean, fantastic for one division, fantastic for Tom Hiddleston. Sure. Sure. Been absolutely amazing in making Tom Hiddleston even more of our favorite, you know, original bad guy. Mm -hmm. uh, like th this show has done so much for character development. It's done so much that. Some people's favorite Loki is now the alligator, who has zero lines in the entire thing. But the most that he does is bite somebody's hand off. <laughs> well, he also tries to bite the, the boastful Loki's, the boastful Loki's <laughs> hand off. Hand off. Yeah. And then he actually does bite President Loki's, President hand. Loki's hand off. So good. Which was a callback to Thor 2, which was a terrible movie. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Man, can you imagine if those Thor movies had been like had been directed by Taika Waititi the Taika entire Waititi time? The entire time. Oh so man, we'd have Piranha. we'd have we'd have such good Thor movies. Yeah, because Taika Waititi is a great director. Great director. Now, granted, the MCU probably would have gone into a more uh, kooky direction. Silly. I was gonna say silly. <laughs> uh, seems like a good word that Taika Waititi might actually use himself. <laughs> Realistically. <laughs> um, but, yeah. and I'm so excited about the future of the MC. Oh, like, so many things. I was, I was excited for just going forward in general. Um, like, Black Widow. I mean, Black oh. Widow was eight years too late. Yeah. And... Okay. I still liked it. I've seen it twice, and I'll probably see it again. Yeah, it just kind of fell flat for me. And as soon as for, it comes like, out, I'll buy it. As far as like an MCU movie goes, for the yeah. characters, great characters. Oh yeah, this them. did the so much, so much character development. <laughs> with, yeah. with it, it. I don't, I don't even you know. know we're how we're just tangenting on <laughs> the, the fact that we can get character development now yes. and, and they're, more okay, than just they're, like the core they're doing group. they're doing they're focusing more on characters which is really good which That's also important. enhances the story most of the time mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah well I like, think the only time of, I think the, the case only, of Black Widow like, I think Black Widow is the only the time only... where they didn't quite hit the mark on story with character development yeah but in like, recent they cases did, they did like develop characters that are going to matter later on. Mm -hmm. and they didn't focus on Scarlett Johansson's Natasha like as much because, well, one, she's not going to be in it. Mm -hmm. And two, uh, you know, the characters, the other characters are going to be moving on from there to be in future projects. Mm -hmm. uh, so... I, they hit the mark with that, but everything else that kind of fell short for me. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, her, her sister character was the best, though. That was great. So funny. Huh. <laughs> but, uh, anyways. Tangent. Secret Wars. <clears throat> yes. Um, also, having seen Nick Fury in space mm -hmm. with S.W.O.R.D., also hints at the fact more more that scrolls are slowly taking over because the scroll that's posing as Nick Fury doesn't isn't as adept at being Nick Fury as he thinks he is. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Which okay, so I think that he took over as well, Nick the... Fury after Captain America two. I could see that. That makes sense. I mean, yeah, Nick Fury would have wanted to. I mean, he's already almost been killed. And well, that so, and, that and I think he wanted to expand more into space and be closer to Captain Marvel, um, like and expand like shield or 
swords reach into space, into helping in, t- in the spatial combat and stuff like that. Yeah. Which would also give room for the Queen of the Scrolls to come in, pose as somebody, and slowly take over and get higher into, like, power without any of the other scrolls noticing or the scroll posing as Nick Fury, which then would trigger off of the Secret Wars because where she gets to a point where, like, she has enough people, and she has enough scrolls in command that she can slowly take out the people that she sees as a, as a threat. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um, I still feel like it seems more likely that... Uh, that would also Nick explain Fury. why Sharon Carter turned out to be a bad guy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that, that, the fact that... Not the fact that the speculation that she is actually the scroll queen is far more likely to me than the fact that, that she Carter turned into a bad guy. Power broker. Yes, not even that she turned into a bad guy, but that she specifically became the most powerful uh, bad guy at that power level, like without any superpowers or you know, without. Anybody without anybody or any noticing or, or or even Steve checking on her. I mean, yeah. come on, really? So much, so much, so much of why that whole thing bothers me. Why her being the power broker just annoys me. So many things. Um, but anyways, uh, I still feel like Nick Fury started Sword after the blip. After the blip, okay. Because he was he was blipped out. Okay, well, and he called Captain Marvel, so I, I still feel like that was Nick well, Fury. I, okay, so okay, so I think that he was he wasn't there during the blip because Steve calls him Nick in Captain America, and if you if you remember in Captain Marvel, he said, "Who like what do you what your, what do you go by Fury." What does your mom call you? Fury. <laughs> Everybody calls me Fury. That is true. Like, but Steve is the only t- only person that calls him Nick over and over again, and he doesn't correct him. So that's why I think that in in Captain America two, he was gone. Kind of makes sense. I mean. Could just be a plot hole. <laughs> it, could, it could be a plot hole. We don't know. We don't There's know. a whole bunch also, of theories and speculation. Also, like, not to say that Steve Rogers is more special than Nick Fury's mother, but uh, it is. It is Steve Motherfucking Rogers. It is. It is. Yeah. It, it is, is Captain Steve. America. It is Captain America. I like, mean, he can. He can get almost anybody to do anything. <laughs> And yeah. he would not care about using his first name. Yeah, I mean, you're not wrong. Yeah. Just just putting that out there. But I mean, even like the strongest being in the universe calls him Fury. <laughs> <laughs> it's just even funnier that it's played by Sam Jackson. <laughs> right. Um, yeah. And as much as the scroll wasn't able to, you know, copy... Nick Fury's mannerisms perfectly, like he thinks he's doing a great job when he's actually not doing the best job ever. <laughs> um, he's still got the bitch you've been to space line, uh, <laughs> bitch you've been to space, which is perfectly within Nick Fury's <laughs> ballpark of things that he would just blurt out and say. Yes, true. Um, so we got that part right. <laughs> uh, <laughs> But yeah, um, when do you think we're going to see Captain Marvel again? In the Marvels. In the Marvels. Yes. I don't think she's going to show up anywhere else. And just... I, no, I don't think it, I don't think so. I think they're going to save her for the Marvels, and she's going to be a jumping off point for um, Kamala Khan. Okay. So that way she can be Miss Marvel, Miss Marvel then here. immediately get rid of her to make 
Monica Rambo and Captain Marvel so that we don't have the <laughs> stupid overpowered Captain Marvel that they have to shoehorn out of movies because she solves all the problems. <laughs> I mean, kind of. <laughs> she supermans everything so much so oh, that just we have to get rid of her. If we ever get, um, if we ever get uh, of like Marvel's version of of Superman, we are so screwed. Because <laughs> like, well, okay, so because. Because not only because he has a split personality, but the fact that he is the p p most powerful being in the entirety of the Marvel Universe. Do you want to elaborate on who that is and just leave it up in the air? For Let's me. leave it up in the air. Oh, man. Oh, man. Make people look it up if they want to know. Yeah. Yeah. Or yeah, you can spend ask, six seconds oh, looking you can, at your phone. Or if you know me, you can ask me at, <laughs> at, at home or work or yeah. in a text message. Yeah, yeah. Guess what? You probably already found out because you have a phone. Mm -hmm. If you're not watching this on a phone. Yeah, if you're watching it on YouTube, you can literally shrink the video down and still yeah, look something just, else. Just, <laughs> Who's Marvel's Superman except totally fucked up? Oh, <laughs> okay. So he has to control. He has to control his aspects, or else if he loses himself, he becomes evil. But he still he still has all his powers, and it's for a while they didn't know how to deal with him. Yeah, <laughs> and that's then why he, you don't make a Superman. <laughs> and then he <laughs> regained himself, and he's he learned how to somewhat control him, control his other side for a little while. Hmm. Until he died, then the most then the then the actual most powerful thing in the universe ripped him in half in space. Fun. <laughs> it was really cool because it was a throwback to when he actually ripped Carnage in half in <laughs> space. So that was also really cool. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, don't know, I think we should probably wrap it up. We're I think so. that fifty minute mark, at least as far as uh, recording time goes. Yep. Minus editing time, we're still probably looking at a 45 minute video. So. Let's wrap it up, man. Yeah, I'm gonna wrap it up. Um, man, we, we don't really. We still got Rick and Morty to talk about. We do have Rick and Morty. Uh, so we'll be doing those videos. And then. That'll probably be the videos uh, for the week, because yeah. I think. We, when, well, I mean, we'll, we are having more movies come out, so we can start. We can doing watch movies we can do again. Jungle Cruise. I so do not want to see that. <laughs> I'm not looking forward to it. But we can. <laughs> we can do. We can do. <laughs> Here's to you. Here's to me. I'm so right for shall always be. By, by chance we disagree. <laughs> screw you. Here's, Here's to, to me. me. Cheers. Cheers.